Hello guys, welcome to GMAT Point. In this video, we'll be discussing about the GMAT preparation strategy for beginners. We'll be discussing everything about how to prepare for the GMAT exam from the scratch, the syllabus, section wise steps on how to prepare and how many months are actually needed to crack the GMAT exam. So let's get started. The GMAT or the Graduate Management Admission Test is one of the most widely taken MBA entrance examinations globally and it is organized by the Graduate Management Admission Council. The GMAT is a computer adaptive test and every management aspirant hopes to achieve a high GMAT score that will allow him or her to apply to some of the best MBA colleges globally. Now in order to make it through the admission process, you will need a great application and you can't make it through the admission process without a GMAT score. Also your GMAT score is the most important factor in your MBA application. So by getting a good score and making it into a top B school, you will take a significant step toward achieving your career goals. Okay, so now you'll need a plan to prepare in an organized way which will help you achieve your target score. So if you're someone who is planning to start the GMAT preparation from the scratch, firstly you should be aware of the GMAT exam pattern. So first let's understand the exam pattern of the GMAT. The exam duration is 3 hours and 7 minutes and during the exam the candidate also has the option of taking 2 8 minute breaks. The total number of sections in the exam are 4. And the total number of questions are 80. The board of examination is online. Candidates have the option to take the exam at home or at a test center. And there is no negative marking in the exam. So these are the four sections in the GMAT exam. As we can see, we have the quantitative reasoning section with 31 questions and 62 minutes is the time limit. And 36 questions in the verbal reasoning section and 65 minutes is allotted for the verbal reasoning. Next we have uh, the integrated reasoning section with 12 questions and 30 minutes and the analytical writing assessment section with one question that is uh, basically you have to write an essay here and the time limit given is 30 minutes also you cannot skip any question and you cannot go back to any question and these are the points uh, given to each section as we can see for the quant and the verbal section the points range between 6 to 51 and for the other two sections uh, for the IR section 1 to 8 and for the AWA section the points range between 0 to 6. Your total GMAT score is based on your performance in these two sections, the quant and the verbal reasoning section. And your overall GMAT score ranges between 200 to 800 with 10 point increments. So this overall GMAT score includes uh, the only these two sections, quant and the verbal reasoning section. Right, now let's talk about the preparation tips. So if you're somebody who's planning to start your preparation for the GMAT, the first question that comes to your mind is how and uh, where to start your preparation. So first you start by writing uh, all your strengths and weaknesses of all the topics and based on that you need to frame a study plan. Uh, but how will you know your strengths and weaknesses? So you'll understand your strengths and weaknesses by taking a mock test before you start your preparation. So you can take a GMAT mock test. Once you've taken the mock test, uh, analyze it thoroughly. Now all you need is a study plan that addresses your weaknesses. And for those sections which are your strengths, you just need to keep practicing so that you don't lose touch. Also please note that the study plan varies from individual to individual and uh, it depends on the time available to you and your uh, strengths and weaknesses. It's also important to start with your target GMAT score in mind and your target GMAT score depends on the B school you're applying for. and based on that score which you're planning to achieve, you need to plan your preparation accordingly. And if you're planning for some of the top B schools, you need to achieve a score of at least 650 plus. So with appropriate planning and strategic approach to your preparation, you can achieve a score of 650 plus or 700 plus. And the next most important thing after you made a study plan is to schedule your examination. So don't delay this process until the last minute. You might risk missing an admission cycle uh, of the B school which you're applying to if you delay this process of scheduling. Also, once you schedule your examination, it makes you more serious about the preparation. You tend to start preparing more seriously. So once you start preparing, focus on each section individually. Devise a study plan wherein you have weekly goals and also have deadlines for the topics which you are going to cover during your preparation. So basically, GMAT tests your analytical and critical thinking skills. Uh, you can't simply ace this exam by memorizing things. So we'll be discussing the strategies to prepare especially for the quants and the verbal section which will help you prepare better for the GMAT exam. Firstly, let's start with the quant section. The quant section considers the candidate's ability to analyze facts and draw conclusions based on their reasoning abilities and this basically tests the quantitative aptitude of the candidate. 
So, these are the two major subtopics under the quant section. So, there will be questions on problem solving and data sufficiency. There will be questions from both these topics and there is no definite number of questions from a particular topic. The problem solving basically evaluates the candidate's ability to solve quantitative issues using logic and analytical thinking. And the data sufficiency evaluates candidates ability to analyze the quantitative issue, determine whether the given data is relevant and assess whether enough information is available to solve the problem. As we discussed earlier, there will be 31 questions in the quantitative reasoning section and the total time is 62 minutes and for each question there will be 5 options available. So, you have to choose your answer from 5 options. Okay, so how do we prepare for the quant section? The first step is to cover the fundamentals of all the topics under the quantitative reasoning section. So, what you need to do is you should review the basic maths concepts. Uh, once you learn the fundamentals thoroughly, you need to practice a lot of questions so that your basics are reinforced. Also, while learning, it's always recommended to make concept notes so that it can come handy during the revision. So, what you should be doing is learn the fundamentals, practice as many questions as possible and revise the concepts regularly. And these are the uh, major topics that are tested in the quant sections. So, we have number systems, arithmetic, ratio proportions, PNC, algebra, linear equations, geometry and so on. Also, apart from your regular practice, you try to spend around 15 to 30 minutes every day on practicing simple speed math calculations. This will help you improve speed while solving the quant questions. As you have 31 questions uh, and you have to solve this in 62 minutes. So, that means you have 2 minutes per question which means speed becomes very important and hence you need to uh, spend some time on this so that you improve your speed during calculations. So, overall try to spend around 1 to 2 hours every day on the quant section. Okay, now moving on to the verbal reasoning section. When it comes to the GMAT exam, the verbal reasoning section is often considered a very challenging section. So, one needs to prepare very rigorously when it comes to the verbal section in the GMAT. First, let us understand what exactly is tested in the verbal section. The most important skills that are tested in this section are your reading comprehension skills, grammar and the critical reasoning skills. So, firstly what you should be doing is you need to learn the basic concepts from these three sections. So, basically the major subtopics under the verbal reasoning section are the critical reasoning, reading comprehension and the sentence correction. So, first learn the fundamentals of all these concepts. You will improve your uh, verbal reasoning skills uh, such as the reading comprehension abilities by reading regularly. So, when it comes to the verbal reasoning section, reading is the most important thing that you should be doing. So, try to allot at least one hour every day for reading. If you are new to reading, start with reading anything you like and slowly diversify your reading into various topics. This will improve your reading comprehension skills and also your reading speed over time. And now one question that is often asked by many students is uh, that is vocabulary important in GMAT? As mentioned here, GMAT is a test of your comprehension skills and your critical reasoning skills and not really your vocabulary skills. But you can allot some time for vocabulary every day if your vocab is too poor. But make sure not to spend too much time on that. Remember that your vocabulary automatically improves if you read quality articles every day. Also, once you learn the fundamental concepts, it's very important to practice the RC exercises every day, the critical reasoning questions and the sentence correction questions. So, try to spend 1 to 2 hours on the verbal reasoning section and this is apart from the regular reading of 1 hour that you do every day. So, as we discussed, these are the three major topics under the verbal reasoning section. So, we have RC, critical reasoning and sentence correction. Uh, the critical reasoning basically evaluates the candidate's ability to construct and analyze arguments and formulate and evaluate a plan of action. RC tests the candidate's ability to make inferences, comprehend logical linkages between the points and additionally it will test your reading skills including inference, application, primary ideas and then we have the sentence correction. So, these are the various subtopics under the three topics which we just discussed. So, these are the, so this is the broad range of topics. And we have a reading comprehension, critical reasoning, subject verb agreement, parallelism and so on. Next, moving on to the analytical writing assessment section. This section evaluates the candidate's ability to think critically and convey their thoughts in writing. So, this part may include themes for the candidate to write about. So, you are required to respond based on the passage of the topic that is given. Uh, the syllabus for this topic is extensive and diverse and these are the broad subcategories under the AWA section. So, the two types of essays here are argument essay and an issue essay. So, for example, if it is an argument essay, you must analyze the logic and represent your argument in this area uh, and keep in mind that you will be graded on how well reasoned your statements are. So, you can either express your support for the given statement or you can express your own opinion. 
but just make sure that you provide your viewpoint in a well structured manner uh, because that will be used to evaluate you all right moving on to the integrated reasoning section so this section evaluates your ability to analyze and evaluate data in various formats so the integrated reasoning section is a recent addition in the exam syllabus so as mentioned th this tests your ability to evaluate data provided in a form of a graph or a table there will be a total of 12 objective questions and these can be from any of these categories these are the four broad categories from which the questions might be based on so we have table analysis so this basically tests the candidate's ability to sort and analyze data in the table or we can have multi source reasoning it tests your ability to study data from variety of sources such as tables visuals text passages or a mix of all these so you need to carefully analyze the data in order to answer the questions next we might have uh, questions from the graphic interpretation it tests your ability to deduce relationships and make inferences from data provided in the graph such as scatter plots bar chart pie chart etc and finally we also have two part analysis basically this tests your ability to tackle complex problems the uh, issues can be verbal or numerical or a combination of the two and here uh, your ability to solve simultaneous equations analyze trade offs discover linkages between the two items is tested also remember that the integrated reasoning section of the gmat is uh, not computer adaptive and also an on screen calculator will be provided for this section only the calculator will not be provided for the quantitative reasoning section but it will be provided for the integrated reasoning section okay so let's look at the time needed for the preparation so how many months are needed to crack the gmat exam honestly there is no magic number as such for the number of uh, months or hours that one needs to prepare for the exam if you are starting your preparation from the scratch it is recommended to start at least 5 to 6 months before your scheduled exam date and usually for those who already have a decent grasp of the fundamentals a minimum of 2 to 3 months is usually recommended in any case it's better to start early rather than placing unnecessary burden on yourself in the last moment and finally the gmat exam is all about time management time management plays a very crucial role in an exam like gmat so especially while learning the basic concepts ensure that you stick to your deadlines so that you would have enough time to cover all the concepts and once the fundamentals are covered it's imperative to solve problems in a timed manner candidates must be taking enough tests to build his ability to manage the time during the exam and one of the biggest mistakes candidates do is not taking enough tests so you must take tests frequently take at least one test per week take enough mock tests analyze them thoroughly understand your weaknesses uh, see where you are scoring less and try to bridge those gaps during your preparation also uh, most importantly during your mock analysis look at the time spent per each question and now how many mocks should you take this actually depends on the student but many students who score a 700 plus on the gmat give around 10 plus mocks but no matter how many mocks you give make sure that towards the last 4 to 5 mocks you should ideally be getting your target score which you are planning to achieve in the final exam you can also kick start your preparation with gmat point so at gmat point we are offering five free topic tests each on the quant and the verbal section so you can go to our website gmatpoint.com and you can take this free topic tests on quant and the verbal so you can take this topic test for free and you can see where you stand with respect to your preparation and also when it comes to exams like gmat peer learning plays a very important role so apart from your regular preparation it's crucial to have a peer group during your uh, gmat preparation you can join our telegram group where you can post and discuss your queries with your peers discuss your test taking strategies your mistakes and many such things so the link for the same is provided in the description box below this will be extremely beneficial during your preparation and also apart from that if you have any other doubts kindly email us at support@gmatpoint.com you can also whatsapp or call us on this number 6303239042 and also please do subscribe to our channel for more important and useful updates so we'll be posting many more such useful videos which will help you in your preparation thank you so much